Welcome again to another in our series of questions from the Old Testament. Our 22nd question is from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah the prophet, chapter 2, verse 28, the question is asked, Where are the gods that you made for yourself? To give our question context today, we'll be reading verses 10 through 28 of Jeremiah chapter 2. For cross to the coasts of Cyprus and sea, or send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there was such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a slave? Is he a home-bound servant? Why then has he become a prey? The lions have roared against him. They have roared loudly. They have made his land a waste. His cities are in ruins without inhabitant. Moreover, the men of Memphis and Tapanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not brought this upon yourself by forsaking the Lord your God when He led you in the way? And now, what do you gain by going to Egypt to drink the waters of the Nile? Or what do you gain by going to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Your evil will chastise you, and your apostasy will reprove you. Know and see that it is evil and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God. The fear of me is not in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. For long ago I broke your yoke and burst your bonds, but you said, I will not serve. Yes, on every high hill and under every green tree you bowed down like a whore. Yet I planted you a choice vine, holy of pure seed. How then have you turned degenerate and become a wild vine? Though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the Lord God. How can you say, I am not unclean? I have not gone after the Baals. Look at your way in the valley. Know that you have done a restless young camel running here and there, a wild donkey used to the wilderness, in her heat sniffing the wind. Who can restrain her lust? None who seek her need weary themselves. In her month they will find her. Keep your feet from going unshod and your throat from thirst. But you say, It is hopeless, for I have loved foreigners, and after them I will go. As a thief is shamed when caught, so the house of Israel shall be shamed. They, their kings, their officials, their priests, and their prophets, who say to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone you gave me birth. For they have turned their back to me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you, in your time of trouble. For as many of your cities are your gods, O Judah." I put together a list of things that are sure to bring you luck. For some, you can have a little statue or a painting or a picture of them where you live and work. For others, you'll need the real thing. How about this? Elephants, fish, a Hamza, crystals, herbs and plants, dream catchers, Mushrooms, either eaten, worn, or art forms of it will do. Turtles. Bamboo. Properly arranged furniture. Fresh flowers. A decluttered environment. Burn incense. Hang a horseshoe. Remember, upside down so the luck won't run out. A fruit bowl. A koi pond. A peacock feather. Blue clothing. Wind chimes. A small fountain. An unbroken mirror where you keep your cash. A wall clock on the east or the west or the north wall. 
a four-leaf clover, fuzzy dice, ladybugs, a rabbit's foot. There, that's enough. I don't want to steal all the luck. Leave some for somebody else. After all, my favorite sports teams can't lose if I have these. I actually had to stop looking this stuff up. Everywhere I looked, someone had a different list of talismans that were guaranteed to bring luck. Do you really believe that having these items will somehow align all the atoms in the universe in your favor? As you might have surmised, I'm a skeptic when it comes to these superstitious beliefs. In case you're wondering, I don't believe that breaking a mirror will bring me bad luck, or walking under a ladder, or crossing paths with a black cat, or opening an umbrella indoors, or rocking an empty rocking chair, or throwing spilled salt over my left shoulder, or knocking on wood to ward off evil spirits. Now You might be wondering, well, what do you believe in? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll get to that in a moment. In our passage today, God asked Judah in a rather sarcastic way if these so-called gods that they have fashioned can save them. If you think my list was long, look at verse 28. It reads, For as many as your cities are your gods, O Judah. If you're wondering just how many of these good luck gods are too many in Judah, I'll give it to you in round terms. Zero. Nada. None. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5, what we know of as the Ten Commandments list, we read, You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth underneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Joshua warned Israel after they had possessed the land promised to them in Joshua 24, 19. He tells them, You are not able to serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. But isn't jealous a bit strong to use for the Almighty God? Not at all. Over and over, God tells us there is no one like Him. Isaiah 42, verse 8 tells us, I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Those carved images could not save Judah. They could not save the idolatrous nations then or now. Those trinkets, talismans, and charms you are collecting and depending upon won't save you either. In fact, they're putting your soul in grave danger. I believe God has this world in His hands and doesn't need our collection of collisionist charms to help Him. Do you have some house cleaning to do? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow. And we'll look at another question from the Old Testament.